Many people believe that government spending is a big factor in the current inflation levels. Can you speak to concerns that spending plans that come out of Build Back Better aren't paid for and so could mean higher deficits and more inflation in the future? Aren't paid for? Build Back Better is paid for. Entirely. Okay. Can you speak to the concerns that are coming in that it's, it's Who are not the concerns actually... from, though? But who's saying it's not paid for? Because there have been a range of economists saying it's entirely paid for. Um, and that has been a priority for the president. Uh, it has also been concluded by a number of Nobel laureates and experts from uh, a range of economic experts on the outside that it will not contribute to inflation. So those are the global experts uh, that we would point to, but there may be others suggesting something else, but I don't know who those people are. So if those bills do pass, it will not raise taxes. Well, it, something being entirely paid for means that part of that is the highest income Americans, highest uh, that companies would be asked to pay a little bit more. Uh, that has been part of the proposal and part of reforming the tax system to make it more fair. So they're also not expected to contribute to future inflation then? The Build Back Better bill? Correct. Again, it's fully paid for. We would point to Nobel laureates and a range of global economists who have conveyed that it would not contribute to inflationary pressures. Go ahead. Thanks, Jen. Uh, I wanted to ask about the impact that President Biden's experience in foreign policy has on the, his handling of the current situation with Russia and Ukraine. Obviously, he served on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. He was vice president when Russia invaded Crimea. He oversaw the end of the war in Afghanistan last year. Can you just talk about how those various experiences have informed his decision making and his thinking on the situation currently with Russia and Ukraine? Uh, absolutely. So one of the, the lessons learned we talked about, I talked about a little bit earlier in response to Josh's question, which is uh, the, the ability and the um, boundless capacity of Russia to uh, misrepresent the truth uh, and spread misinformation through a range of channels. I mean, they have a range of state-run media channels that are not just prevalent in Russia, but around Eastern Europe, across Europe. You can even find them in the United States. But even beyond that, uh, this is a capacity that we've seen them utilize in 2014 and 2016 and many times in between. Uh, so one of the lessons that we have learned is certainly, and the President has learned, is certainly that uh, it's important to call out this disinformation. Um, and to make clear uh, to the American public, to the global community, what they're trying to do here and the fact that it is not accurate. They're trying to set the predicate for war. We've done that through a number of means. Last week, the administration announced sanctions on four, of course, Ukrainian individuals. We also had a briefing, launched a website, released a fact sheet to educate the public on the Russia d disinformation ec ecosystem. The FBI and DHS are coordinated with the intelligence community as well as state and local partners to ensure a common understanding of Russia disinformation and influence activities related to the situation in Ukraine. Uh, so that's one part. I'd also say that for the president, and this has been a priority for him since he came into office, building up our alliances and partnerships uh, with the global community, ensuring that close coordination is uh, front and center and is a priority, uh, is something that he has learned uh, through his time in uh, foreign policy uh, as the former chair of the, of the Foreign Relations Committee, of course, as vice president, is imperative. Uh, and we believe that's proving to be very effective at this point in time. We've had more than 100, probably way more than that, at this point, engagements with NATO partners, allies around the world. Um, and we have a coordinated and strong um, uh, you know, approach to how we're approaching the buildup of troops on the border uh, of Ukraine. So uh, there are many lessons, but I would say those are two of the biggest ones.